Welcome to How to Design Hypotheses and Experiments. My name is David J. Bland. I'm the founder and CEO of Precoil, an innovation consulting agency here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And last time we left off with a, an exercise called assumptions mapping. Now this was design thinking and lean startup kind of blended together with your team to help pull out these assumptions and then map them on a two by two and get you to focus on what's important and unknown. We call these the leap of faith assumptions. Well, we have these assumptions, now what? Well, if you were in virtual reality, for example, when you do this exercise, a desirability assumption you came up with was something like, people who wear glasses can't find a VR headset that fits properly. Now, if you look at the color that's orange, that's a desirability assumption. It's really a focus on the customer and the need and the problem space in your value proposition. So. But you may ask yourself, wait, isn't a hypothesis just an assumption? Well, a key distinction here is that a hypothesis is a working assumption. And often when you do the assumptions exercise, the way you design these out the first time, they're not really all that testable. So let's work on that. Let's take a closer look. So if we look at this statement, people who wear glasses can't find a VR headset that fits properly. Now there's some things to really to unpack there. First off, if you use this uh, hypothesis format that I, I like to use, it starts with, we believe that. So if we change that assumption to say, we believe that people who wear glasses can't find a VR headset that fits properly. Now that's a step in the right direction. At least you're saying as a team, like this is something we believe and we're willing to go test. Now let's look at the word glasses. Uh, like what kind of glasses? Well, specifically eyeglasses here, right? We're thinking of uh, these are people with corrective lenses and they, they're trying to wear these and wear these uh, VR sets and it's really clunky and it just fits properly. And then they have this really poor experience. So we wanna be pretty specific there with, with eyeglasses. Now let's look at the term people, right? It's not just people in general. Really, we're thinking about, well, what are the men? So are there men who wear eyeglasses that can't find a VR headset? What about women? Are there women who wear eyeglasses that can't find a VR headset? So really we have two hypotheses already. We've taken this kind of squishy assumption that we used in our assumptions mapping. We all agreed upon it was kind of important and unknown, but then we start breaking it down into something testable and being very, very specific. And we could even go more specific than, than this if we really wanted to go very, very niche. We need to know when these are true. So I like this statement. We will know this is true when, and then backing that up with quantitative and qualitative uh, information to help understand okay, what's the what? So the quantitative's the what and the qualitative's the why. Yeah, like we need a mix of those to really help kind of prove or disprove these hypotheses. But let's talk about experiments. I mean, we have hypotheses now. Uh, what are the kinds of experiments we would run? And you have landing pages, you have paper prototypes, you have clickable prototypes, you have concierge MVPs, you have call to action testing, you have feature fakes, you have all these different types of experimentation. There's really hundreds more. And you're probably looking at yourself going, uh, yeah, where do I start now? So the important thing to learn here and to really, really remember is generate your experiments from your hypotheses. There are all kinds of different experiments out there, but as a guiding principle, you want to generate them from these testable hypotheses that you've created that are tied to your leap of faith assumptions. So we have these two hypotheses now. We believe that men who wear eyeglasses, we believe that women who wear eyeglasses. And for these, we want to really go with landing pages and problem interviews. They're a pretty a low cost, really quick way to get out there and do rapid experimentation on your value prop in the desirability space. So here you have a basic of the landing page with VR goggles would have men's frames. These are tied back to our um, first hypothesis here called action here of learn more. They put in their name and their email. And then we created one for women as well. Uh, women's frames, again, call to action, name and email. Now you may be asking yourself, well, wait a second here. Do we really want to launch these landing pages? And what about our logos? Well, if you are a startup, then my answer would be yes. Uh, just launch it. Nobody cares about your brand. It's much more wasteful to go out there and build something nobody wants than to put out a landing page you're kind of embarrassed about to test the value prop. It's not a big deal. But if you're not a startup, then uh, consider going off brand. Still launch it, but many, many corporations today are launching things kind of stealthily a little bit, and they're taking their logo off and they're branding in a different way. And that way, the idea kind of stands on its own merit. You don't get tens of thousands of people signing up right away just because you put your logo on it. So once you get traction, they can bring it on brand later or they can kill it. It's not a big deal. So uh, you have landing pages. Now what? Well, you have to drive people to those landing pages. You have to go find those people online and offline. 
For online here, we're gonna use Twitter ads as an example because it's a pretty mature product now for Twitter and you can actually uh, pretty cheaply go out and drive traffic to your landing page. So on the left, you have the, the one for men. On the right, you have the one for women. And if you look at how we're targeting people, in this case, we're gonna dial into people in the Palo Alto area because there's a big VR push here in Silicon Valley. And then on the left, we're gonna target um, men. So we selected male for gender. And on the right, we're targeting women. So we selected female for gender. So there are actually gonna be two different versions of these ads um, dialed into specifically men and women going to the corresponding landing pages. And then we're actually gonna follow people. Um, we're gonna target these for people following Warby Parker. It's a pretty hipster kind of eyeglass manufacturer. We feel like if people are following them, then there's a good chance they're wearing eyeglasses. And we're gonna set our budget at $100 a day. You wanna drive enough traffic to these pages that you can actually make some changes and it's statistically significant. If you only have two or three people coming to your landing page every day, it's gonna be really tough to understand like is there or there or there. So let's revisit our statement earlier. We will know this is true when. Now, we're looking for a 15% conversion rate here, so that means 15 out of every 100 people who visit uh, will actually sign up with a valid email. So we can actually write that in a way where we say, we will know this is true when 15 out of every 100 who visit our landing page sign up with a valid email. So what about the qualitative? So yeah, we have people signing up. Well, you should reach out to them. You know, those aren't magically your beta users where you go launch a product now and they, they just give you money. You actually should go conduct interviews and that's the qualitative side of that. So we're talking landing page and we're talking problem interviews, reaching out to understand like, why did you sign up? What problem have you had in the past? There's an art to that as well. And uh, you really need to balance that with the quantitative uh, in your experimentation. So overall, I hope you start to see the picture here here of you know you're mapping out your assumptions and you're focusing on what's at the top right so important and unknown assumptions but they can be difficult to test so how do we write those as hypotheses and then how do we generate experiments from our hypotheses so now what these are just two of many different types of experiments you could run um, it's really difficult to navigate it at times if you need help uh, prequail.com sign up for a free 30 minutes of advising thanks